hello students so on this video we are going to start the first chapter um, and the first chapter the first chapter of the first book and the name of the first book as you know indian society it is indian society and in indian society the first chapter is also given in here as in the book uh, as indian society but the thing is that within indian society the first chapter uh, the demographic structure of society means the structure of the indian society will come so we will merge the two things indian society the first chapter and the second chapter the demographic structure of the indian society within the structure of the indian society the demographic structure of indian society will come so at the very first thing introducing an indian society as i have also told you in the uh, last video uh, there is an introduction of the indian society so indian society how indian society was formed what were the reasons of uh, the changes of the indian society so colonialism because of colonialism uh, by the british people that in that consciousness grew and the emergence of the new markets happened because of the colonialism all these things i have already discussed with you then the 1.2 means second discussion will be on demographic structure of indian society means within the structure of indian society the demographic structure of indian society will also come so within the demo demographic structure of indian society in this book is named as the or it is given in the second chapter so we are we will merge the first chapter indian society the introduction of the introducing indian society along with the demographic uh, structure of indian society means the structure of indian society within that thing the demographic structure of indian society will come and thirdly most important thing rural urban linkages and divisions that is the that is different kind of markets weekly tribal market will come under this section rural uh, urban linkage there is a they are both in, interdependent right urban and rural are interdependent and there some divisions are also there market divisions are also there so uh, all this will come in this uh, discussion in the video so we are going to start these things and i'm going to give you a gist of this um gist of this sub chapter means the summary of this chapter so here it uh, the introduction of the indian society the first thing as you have uh, read in the first chapter chapter 1 introducing indian society so you will also read by yourself introducing and introduction is there so the first thing from this particular thing the thing it has come uh, so you have to understand the term state so i'm going to uh, from the from reading of this particular thing introducing an introduction i have come out with certain points and those points i want to discuss with you from this chapter so the first here goes like that so the first thing the term state state it refers to an abstract entity consisting of a set of political legal institution that claim control over a particular geographical territory and people living in it you have to understand the term state we consider there are a number of states but the state is an abstract thing it is an abstract thing but it it consists of a set of there should be a political and legal institution to to form uh, form a state then it also claim over a particular geographical territory so boundary geographical territory implies the state assam uh, has a particular geographical territory from this boundary the another state will come so and the people also living on this geographical territory so along with the term state state is generally an abstract term but along with the term state what happened some political legal uh, institution and the very important thing is the geographical territory and also people living in it you have already got in class 11 also so some so, some ethnic groups consist of people having a common descent in addition to other commonalities of language and culture so ethnic groups some ethnic groups are there so ethnic groups means the people who are living in this state from a very long time and they are the ethnic people ethnic group they are the ethnic group so they consist of people having a common descent they are coming from a common descent in addition to their other commonalities of language they, there are some other thing common common uh, uh, common aspect of those ethnic group like language or the culture they share the same culture they share the same language or they come from the uh, common descent okay they are continuing the common descent 
A comparable social map understood through introspection tells one's location in the society. So, a comparable social map understood through introspection. Um, yes, introspection tells one's location in a society. So, we can uh, we have to see a social map, and through the social map, uh, it is understood. Uh, we have to put some introspection and it also tells us our location in the society so uh, we, if we see the social map then it tells us the our location in the society for instance a student of senior uh, there is an instant there is an example a student of senior secondary falls in a group of young people this group accounts uh, for 40 percent in india's population yes if we for instance for example the young people uh, the secondary student like you you fall in the group of young people and it consists of 40 percent of india's population so it is categorized by that particular group by that particular um, uh, characteristics so his language may be any of 22 language scheduled in the constitution regional or linguistic community that particular that particular young people who falls uh, on this criteria he is a senior secondary student okay his language may be different of 22 languages among 22 languages that is considered that may be regional that may be a linguistic community as percent occupation per 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 parents occupation and family as per parents uh, occupation and family income he may be of middle class lower class or upper class family okay his division his characteristic regarding his language is brought out then his parents according to his parents occupation and family income he may be considered as the middle class lower class or the upper class family so it is brought as per religion caste again ling linguistic diversity is done then linguistic char characteristic of his, his characteristic regarding the linguistic thing it is done his class uh, characteristic means that is depend that is dependent on his parents or family income that is again done and third important thing that as per his religion he may be or caste or tribe uh, or such other social group he is grouped it means he is already grouped it he is a Hindu or he is a Muslim he is a Christian he is a Hindu Brahmin he is a Khatriya um, or whatever according to his caste or the tribe hill tribe the plain tribe tribe of the plan so he is grouped and among uh, a wave of social relationship one can does yes we can find his identity so first we have to find his identity like he is a student of senior secondary class so he is grouped in a he is uh, placed in a group of young people second important thing is that uh, by his language his language may be of any kind of 22 language his language is language is determined so uh, as per the uh, as per the income of his family or the parents that his middle class class is determined then according to his uh, religion caste and tribe his that identity is determined so these things will be needed in order to form this thing in order to bring out the identity of a particular person of a particular group all these things are needed okay the boundaries on the barriers boundaries or the barriers drawn uh, around the individual are yes a thing is that so all the boundaries are here you will get that all the boundaries are there so one boundary is the such different kind of boundaries boundaries are there first boundary is the age boundaries second is the regional boundaries third is the economic regional regional means that region where he stands where he sits where he stays economic means his class religious boundaries but depending upon this caste tribes and religion so next is caste boundaries all these things this kind of map is always misleading and it can it can distort a human personality and because it gives parts to narrow mindedness yes but the thing is that we always go with these things we always brings out the identity with all those criteria all those boundaries but it uh, may lead it may give a, a misleading concept regarding human personality because it is narrow somewhat it is very narrow and one should understand in order to come out safely from this trap with reflexity with peace and ability to reflect a 
do analysis whenever you become grow grow up then you have to do that reflexivity reflexivity is there when self analysis should be there which community which uh, identity you do you belong on that identity is determined not by your religion not by your language or not by your caste not by your class but that is somewhat comprehensive nationalism in india could emerge yes. in this chapter you will go in the state introducing an introduction so nationalism the consciousness of nationalism within the people of india grew because of the colonialism that whenever the colonialism becomes very harsh as one of the harshest system across the world and it reaches peak it reaches climax then nationalism the consciousness of nationalism uh, grew among the people of india you will get to know here it was actually colonial rule that unfilled all of india for the first time and uh, unified all of india for the first time and brought in the forces of modernization and capitalist economic change as i have already told you in the last video because of the colonialism and its peak its highest peak means colonialism reaches reach its means climax it, it was the highest peak and then what happened it this is the very colonial rule uh, by the british people that unified all of the indian people for the first time and it brought the it also brought the modernization the concept of modernization capitalist economic economic change there were number of economic change and the society also changed because of the thing that's why all those things came because of the very colonial rule by the british and it reached its peak at that time so where we can state in brief that indian nationalism took shape under british colonialism and we sum up the thing that the consciousness nationalism uh, we sum up we can sum up that the concept of nationalism or the consciousness of nationalism among the people of india grew or it took place took step under british colonialism because of colonialism indian nationalism the consciousness of indian nationalism took place so next in the next chapter demographic structure of indian society the very thing that the chapter is named as demographic structure of indian society or a demographic structure demography here implies uh the demography comes from two greek word actually so one is that uh, so you will get in the chapter 2 demography is a systematic study of first you know that demography is a systematic study of population to do the systematic study of population demographic science or demography is very important so the term demography has come the etymological word of the uh, term demography is uh, is of it is of greek origin and there are two words one is demos demos means people and graphene means to describe so uh, it implies that description of people description of people means the description of the population so demography uh, actually studies the trends and process associated with people including changes in the people pe population in size so patterns of birth date migration from one country to another country one place to another then structure and composition of population structure composition of population all these are studied by demographic science or demography there are varieties of demography including one is that variety various types of demography or demographic science are there first is first important thing is the formal demography formal demography is there which is largely quantitative quantitative field then social demography is there it focuses on the social economic and political aspects of population and there also demographic studies are based on some processes or counting of enumeration such are the census or survey as you have already got it the process project method some projects are there census survey method so uh, these are done because uh, in order to hold the demography demographic study okay which involves systematic collection of data on the people regarding the people residing within within, within a specified territory so um, the people are living on this territory the people are living on the geographical territory in order to do or in order to conduct all those studies demographic science are important demography is important and because of in order to hold the demographic science uh, th those things means the survey method then uh, then then uh, all those things means uh, chances is done uh, to collect the data to collect the data to have the information 
so it is demography demography is very important in the field of sociology in fact the emergence of sociology is and its successful establishment as an academic uh, study academic discipline uh, today we can study sociology as a discipline academic discipline because there were lot of contribution um, uh, of demography or demographic science on sociology and because of that demographic science we get sociology as a matter of uh, or as an academic discipline to study today so uh, the thing is that uh, in this chapter demographic uh, demographic structure of indian society one of the very important some theories are there and the concept of demography is also there one of the important theory of uh, uh, demographic or population growth is maltha malthas one uh, one particular uh, science geographer or whatever the scholar is there thomas robert malthas he was born on 1766 and he died in the year 1834 so maltha studied uh, studied at cambridge and trained to become a christian priest but his theory on population growth is very important and uh, there were number of famous theories of demography and it is related to related it is one the one related with the english political economist that was i have already mentioned thomas robert malthas so malthus theory of population growth was a rather pessimistic one it was pessimistic means it uh, it it also carries some darker sides malthus theory of population growth was a rather pessimistic okay according to him the very important thing listen carefully there is a method to increase prosperity and there, that is by controlling the increase in population so prosperity can be done but uh, you have to control according to malthus you have to control the increase in population at the same time he gave two methods to control the population very important you will get to know about the malthus malthus the malthusian theory of population growth is there read it very carefully one question will definitely come from this uh thing the theory of demographic transition is also there demographic transition is very important you have to go with this chapter be uh, very carefully because one question is must from this chapter from this lines so malthus according to malthus there, there were two methods to control the population first is one should be one was preventive checks in which person can control himself to stop the increase in population preventive measures should be there and that is what people can do by themselves according to malthus second one is positive sex means to stop uh, the stop of increase in population through famine famine ends and diseases like this like every uh, it it happens like after uh, after many times means it is very natural it is also very natural after many after many years means it happens famine or uh, the disease some disease occurred globally and it reduces the population no according to malthus it is very natural like we can also take the example of covid also natural disaster some natural disaster some diseases some famines globally so from this particular global what happened to covid 19 so people most of the millions of population uh, decreased because of this particular pandemic across the world so it happens means it is natural according to malthus it is a process of decreasing the population famines and disease can happen or natural disaster will happen because of the natural disaster or famines or the disease population is decreased that is the second method according to malthus so uh next important thing yes india very importantly india is second most populous country in the world after china so according to census survey of 2000 uh, 2000 its total population was 1.03 billion the growth rate of india's population has not always been very high but we if we look at the start start published by the government of india it was maximum up to 2.2% just after looking at this chart we can come to know about the growth rate of population the sex ratio is also important indicator of gender balance in its uh, population in the population sex ratio is also important according to the uh, in the ratio of the uh, male against the ratio of the male how many females are there so uh, sex ratio is also important in the population gender population gender balance in the population meaning of sex ratio is that how many females are there as i have told you according to the in a particular area 
for every thousand males in one year means in one year against of 1000 male how many females are there in a particular area that is the thing so the sex ratio was 1000 uh, ratio into 99 in 2001 means against 1000 male there were 933 female one of the main reasons of decreasing numbers of female is the wish to have a male child among the people and as we have known that all the people of the uh, in all the people all the families of india there were the desire to have a male child so that was the reason of decreasing of uh, ratio of female against a male male ratio if the population will be literate then it must be aware that evil consequence of more population and they will try to control the population yes the very important thing as you have already already get development is the best contraceptive you uh, the person the families of india across india will do will won't need any of the preventive thing if they become uh, knowledgeable if they become educated or literate if they become literate they will know the the uh, the repercussion or the consequences bad consequence evil impact evil impact of the growing population and they will definitely come deliberately to stop the population uh, that's why they have to become literate knowledgeable and also educated that's why education could become one of on one of the means of keeping control over the population that's why it is considered towards the later the later later part of the towards the end of the chapter you will know that education is one of the most important thing which can uh, remove all these things which can reduce the gender population and it will definitely grow that consciousness among the people uh, and that is the uh, that is the prime hope for all the people that education is one of the most important important things to reduce or to control the population that is what in the chapter all these things are in the chapter but the thing is that some little little uh, small aspects will be there common concepts and indicators are there so size and growth of india's population say according to in the year means year by 1909 how many total population average annual growth rate decadal growth rate so all these things were 2011 birth and rate rate in india from 1901 to 2001 is there then the global influenza, influenza pandemic in 1918 and 1919 so influenza pandemic was there spanish flu was there then asian flu was there because of this like covid 19 because of these things that mortality rate was there means uh, that was the year of world war also so now all these things are there you will read it then the state wise birth rates in india in 2016 that is a map is in map in india so birth rate you will are able to understand by seeing then the age structure of india's population will be there age pyramid will be there then the then the that demographic does the changing age structure offer a demographic divided in india you will get to know the declining sex ratio in india you will get declining sex ratio as i have already told you because of the wish of the many families to have a male child declining of sex ratio against male 1000 male 933 women are there females are there so literacy literacy is very important then rural urban differences will be there as i have told you there is a linkage rural urban linkage is there so uh, national socio demographic rules for 2000 2010s are there read by yourself then you will understand all these things so uh, i have already told you the important question from this chapter population explosion what do you understand by population explosion then martha's theory is most important one question will come from martha's theory he gave two methods and you have to write the two methods birth rate and date rate you have to write then why birth rate is relatively slow to fall while date rate declines much faster these questions will come then a structure of the population what do you understand by a structure of the population these things will be needed sex ratio what do you understand by sex ratio uh, what is sex ratio why it uh, means why uh, do you feel the parents still prefer to have sons rather than daughters because of that particular common or typical typical wish of the indian families sex ratio is declining all these things that questions will come from this chapter so thank you this is for english medium so i'm summing up here the second chapter first chapter i'm going to merge the first chapter in the second chapter 
the structure of the Indian society means the demographic structure of Indian society will fall in this chapter, second chapter. And the first was that Indians, uh, Indian uh, introducing Indian state or Indian uh, introducing Indian society. In the Indian society, all those came means colonialism, nationalism of the uh, the, the concept of nationalism came from the came from the or the root of the um, consciousness. Uh, the root of the nationalism consciousness among the people it grew because of colonial rule uh, and the second chapter as you have already got these things so i'm summing up here i hope you will understand and try to understand try to read the lines very carefully then you will understand thank you so much